So thank you everyone for showing up, right? Uh, I'm Shankar. Uh, I lead the Snowflake ISV engineering team at Microsoft. So I work with our close partner Snowflake in supporting all of our engineering integrations, customers, solutions, and I'm pretty sure at some point in time I would have engaged with a lot of you folks, right? I'm also one of the Snowflake data superheroes. I did leave my jacket, uh, unfortunately, at home, right? And this is my conference attire, right? So, you know, pretty much I'm here, and I'm going to talk about something different now, right? Which is the toolkit, uh, what I've been working for a while, right? And uh, before we start on that, right, uh, this is my book, right? I did write the book on Snowpark, right? So if you guys are interested, you can take a look at it. Some of the stuff what I'm talking about is also open source as part of the book, right? So you guys can actually access it uh, through the GitHub repository. I'm going to put up the link as well shortly. And uh, why did we do this, right? Before that, what are the challenges in adopting AI, right? We see AI all the time, right? I jokingly said we should stop taking shots every time AI is mentioned in the conference because you don't want the audiences to get drunk, right? So what are the challenges in AI, right? Every time when we speak with customers, it's not, the, not just the platform, it's not just the capabilities, right? But a lot of customers don't have a clear AI needs, right? They know they want to do AI, but they don't know what they want to do AI, right? And adding to that is the data chaos, right? Which means that you have data and disparity system. You don't know where the data is. You don't know where the data exists, right? And there is always a disconnect between business and IT, right? Business wants something else. IT guys are focusing on something different, right? Uh, there is always pressure in leadership to prove fast, right? You don't want to take weeks or months. You want to get the POC, POV done in days or no. And now with co-pilot and stuff, even in hours, right? And AI is practically, even though it's everywhere, it's out of reach for most users, right? You have tens of th thousands of platforms, tens of thousands of stuff, but organizations still struggle to figure out which use case to pick, what data to use, and what's the value it's really providing. And what do we decide to do about it? This started as an hobby project to kind of working with customers, right? And then I ended up deciding to make it open source because I think there is a good value in a lot of customers adopting it, right? We created the open source AI toolkit, right? What it does is it's an AI accelerator and a playground. It's a Streamlit-based app, so you can deploy it on Streamlit in Snowflake, or you can convert it into a native application and deploy it in Snowflake. Right? It has various capabilities like your playground, your build, your search, and also the agent features. It's completely powered by Cortex AI and Snowflake functions, which means that the data doesn't really leave the AI, right? uh, leave Snowflake. It all runs within your own Snowflake. What we are doing is a wrapper function uh, and a module on top of it, which you can interact with to do this functionality. Right? It's completely open source. It's an Apache license. Right? How many of you love open source? I use a lot of open source, right? Um, you know, I like to also contribute back. It's completely open source, no license. You can take it, modify it, install it, distribute it. Uh, the full code is available, right? And we have also learned that not all of the customers install it native, right? So we also have a local mode in case you're a pro developer who wants to extend some of these functions and implement specific apps uh, that you need for your organization. It can also run as a local mode. We basically have a flag parity that you can set uh, that runs between uh, the native app and the local mode, right? And why did we do that, right? So we saw the challenges. One of the things is we want to get away from the AI bus to actually start showing some business impact, right? Organizations take a lot of time in talking about AI, what to do, how to do, right? But we want to get past that stage and get the hands in the keyboard and start doing some impact, right? Uh, we want to build it on a trusted data foundation. So running it native in Snowflake is one of the features because your data is secure by design. It doesn't leave the boundary, right? So we want to keep the same standards and leverage the innovation that Snowflake has already been put in, right? We are basically bridging the business and IT with usable AI. If you see some of the stuff, what I'm going to show is a UI. There is also code that runs behind it. For business users, they can operate on the UI, show the business value, and then you can take the same set of code as a developer, modify it, and take it to production, right? So we want to bridge both of the gap between business and IT. You can actually do faster POV, right? From weeks, it takes just days, even hours to do it. You point it to your data, you run it, you prove a use, use case, and it runs, right, for your POV. Uh, we want to get AI for everyone, not just data scientists. As a developer, we are all guilty about touching too much code, right? Talking too much code even to our business users. We want to get past that and give them also an environment where they can operate a lot of different stuff. 
And finally, I have a lot of free time and, uh, you know, find so difficult to sleep, right? So you need to do something till you exhaust all the Xbox games. So this is one of the ways that I spend my weekends and night when, uh, when I'm away from my Xbox. So, so what are the things that you can do today with this, right? You can test and ease quickly explore Cortex-AI's native functionalities, right? If you're a new customer hearing about Cortex, wanting to get into Cortex, you can actually use it. You can rapidly build and prototype AI-driven solutions, right? You can do much of much different AI use case. You can actually do a RAG. You can even fine-tune it with your own data using the Cortex models, right? You can customize and extend all of the toolkit is written from a developer perspective. So all of the layer functions are modularized. All of the codes are layered. So you can actually throw away the whole UI, put your entire UI, and reuse the function what we have so you don't have to write the entire wrapper yourself, right? You can, it shortens a lot of development time. So you don't have to waste time in building all those libraries and whatnot, right? And what we are hearing recently is a lot of those students who are taking the new Snowflake uh, course, right? The certification on native applications and data scientists and stuff, they are also using this to actually practice Cortex functions, right? We just added it after we got feedback from those students saying that, hey, we actually used your toolkit uh, for preparing the certification, right? So you can do a bunch of different things with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch over to the demo. Right? Uh, I hope uh, this works. Again, this is a pure developer build. And as you know, right, we keep changing till the last minute, right? So let me know if you can see it. This is actually running as a um, you know, toolkit within the Streamlit experience. This is not installed as a native app yet, right? But it, because it's Streamlit, you can actually open and install it as a native app, right? I'm going to show you some of the quick components, right? The playground is similar to the new playground what you have in um, what you have in Snowflake, right? But it allows you to do a bunch of different stuff, right? We want to give a single experience which can chat about different things. You can also use the built-in LLM function. I'm just going to take a sample. Uh, I'm going to pick the Claudia model, right? Uh, I'm going to just pick a table. Let's say, let's give it an image, right? So my images, and then I'm giving the image of my book, right? So I just run. So this is using the new uh, complete multi-model that Snowflake introduced, right? This is a quick way to just feed in your data, start chatting about it to, to let it run, right? And it's going to prompt the answer below while it's just spinning up the app from the soft mode to the uh, active mode, right? Uh, so if you see here, it shows the image of the book, and it also gives the description of what this book is about, right? This is using the Claudia model within the Cortex environment. You can do a bunch of different things as well. You can pick a different model. You can do a translate. You can do a summarize. You can do extract. All of the Cortex functions are available built in, right? And apart from the playground mode, right, you can also use chat with different stuff, which I'm going to show you. Right? Within the build, right? Within the build, you can actually build a stuff, right? This is think about this as a way for you to use your own model and generate something that writes to an output data, right? Let's say what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a summary, uh, like a complete function, right? I'm gonna use the base model again. Uh, Claudia is fine, right? Um, I'm gonna say you summarize your bot. So you can see this is for outputting, right? So here, if you see, I have a demo data, right, which has the list of titles of about books about the president, right? We made this demo during the election, right? So this has a list of books about the various presidents. If you see, some of the descriptions are missing, right? The descriptions is not there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this data, pass this information to the LLM, and actually generate the description, right? So I'm coming here. I'm giving it the demo, right? And I'm doing a public giving the president, and then I want to do the description title, right? I want to generate the description based on the title. So I'm just going to give the output table as summary table, output column as description. So what I'm going to change this to here, right? Generate. And five words. Okay, I'm going to give the description and I'm going to give the summary. Okay, and when I run it, it actually creates the table with that particular column in it. So what it does is it takes the description, it reads through this, and then it summarizes it with less than five words. Right. 
And if you see, once it runs, it actually runs in the background, so you can actually operate what you want. And you can go to the notification to check what is going on with it, right? So if you see it, it is still running and it's successful. Now if you go into the demo and go into the public, uh, look at the table, right? You should see the summary table. So if I do the select star from summary table, so if you see the description, uh, it has generated the summary version with less than five words, right? Next, what we can also do is we're going to fine tune it to generate all the missing descriptions, right? So I can go in here again, and I can do a bunch of different stuff, right? Along with fine tuning, you can actually generate your own Cortex search, right? So what it means is that you can use it as the uh, search value. I can enter the service name. I can give the you know data name, and then I can give which columns and attributes to choose which model to pick. It automatically picks up the right model which is available. I have already created one with the sake of time, and I'm going to show you what it is. So if you see, this is on the sales intelligence, right? And this is the Cortex service. So if you see here, it has the uh, you know, uh, database name. It has the search column, which is a transcript test, and all of the attributes column that we gave for the Cortex search. You can actually chat with the data. It even gives all the definition SQL, right? Let's say you want to take the code and run it somewhere else in a different database. You can actually get the old code from here, right? So think of it as an UI for you to create and view all of the Cortex search that are there. Um, the same way you can also do an agent, right? And before showing an agent, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of quick screens, which is the rag. You can actually do the rag. It, you can pick the embedding what you want, and you can actually do the rag on top of it and use the rag for embedding. Because of the time, I'm just going to run through uh, this piece, but show you guys the fine tuning. Now we saw the description that was missing, right? So what we are going to do is we're going to go and fine tune it. With fine tune, Snowflake expects the table to have different columns, right? You need to have the prompt, and you need to have the definition of the prompt as a table. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the, pick the same one, right? We're going to pick the public. If you see, we, we have already separated it out to the training and validation, right? The reason why we do it is we are basically separating the data set into a training and validation so that we can fine tune the model and validate against that fine tuned model, right? We're picking the llama here, right? And I'm just putting a table. Uh, and this is how Snowflake expects the train. Like if I give a different table, for example, Right, it tells me that it requires this particular column because for fine tuning, Snowflake expects this particular column uh, to have prompt and completion. Right, to just show you what what that means. Right, so if you look at this here, it has the completion and it has the necessary prompts required for. It. So what we are doing is we are putting the uh, you know summary description and we are generating the description for that particular uh, book title. Right, and we are feeding in the existing description there so that it can fine tune based on that. So I'm going to go back here, right? I'm going to select it as fine train, right? And I'm going to book, uh, put it as book uh, fine tune, right? Uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to just put this, and I'm going to run it. So again, this runs as a background job, right? We don't have to wait for the whole thing. I already have a model uh, that I trained during my demo. So if you see, it gives you the tracking ID. And you can actually go and check it, check that in the notification as well, right? The notification is going to show that you see the fine-tuned model; it ran successfully. It gives you the additional information as well, right? Now I'm going to my uh, build, right? And I'm going to select the fine-tune. And if you see the moment I select the fine-tune, right, uh, it's going to give me the. Um, so I'm going to do the complete, and then I'm going to select the fine-tuned model, right? If you see, it gives me all of the fine tune that I have created right now, right? So I can pick the fine tune what I want. I'm going to pick the Amazon Books model, right? And I'm going to give the uh, generate the descriptions of the title. Okay, and I'm going to give the title here, right? I'm going to do the same thing: demos, public. I'm going to select the book, and I'm going to give the title for it, right? And I can write it again to the output table. So I'm going to do um, Amazon Books complete, and then the description output column is the description, right? So I'm going to run this. So you see, initially we have a description that is null, right? Uh, so now if you see this job is running, it's basically taking the fine-tuned model, passing in the old data, and then uh, generating all the description with the fine-tuned model. So if I go back to the notification, I can actually see that uh, this complete has succeeded, right? So I can go in here. I can actually do a refresh. And if you see, I have another table here called as Amazon Books Complete. So I'm going to do just change this, Books Complete. 
Now, if you see the initial one added description missing, right? Now, if you see this has all the descriptions, right? The original table has the description that is missing, and this has all of the description that is filled for it, right? So we can also use a fine-tune model. And off late, I know Snowflake is innovating at a very fast rate, right? So what we have also done is we have also given a private preview feature, right? Meaning for this, I cannot enable it because my region doesn't support. If you are in a region that supports the new OpenAI models, the DeepSeq models, this is going to get enabled, and you can even pick that models to do the uh, fine-tuning stuff. And then we're going to quickly see the Cortex agent. Here you can actually create a Cortex agent. You can give all of those different instructions. You can add all of the different toolkits, like your Cortex search, your Cortex analyst, et cetera. I'm going to show you one which is already available. right? So if you see, this is the toolkit. It gives you the Cortex uh, text to SQL. It gives the schema, uh, the YAML file from the stage location. It gives all of those different stuff for the Cortex search. You can pick the search that you created already here. right? Uh, you can upload it, right? And now, if you see, we have given the instruction. You can chat with this Cortex agent, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to pick the chat functionality, right? Uh, here I can chat either with a search service. I can do it with a rag with my embedding, or I can do a Cortex agent, right? I'm going to just show uh, the Cortex agent. I'm going to pick the sales intelligence bot, which I did, right? And I'm going to copy the question that I have, right? So I'm, I can just put what are the top three client deals, right? Because the data is about the sales data, right? So I can put what are the top three client deals. It actually calls the agent, executes the agent, looks through the Cortex search analyst, and it can get the response back, right? So the entire thing is in you. I think about in your AI scenario, you can actually take it, uh, load it to your data, immediately do a fine tuning like how I did, right? Build a rag on top of it and start chatting it to show the value. And then the source code of this is all functions that's encapsulated that you can actually take it and then push it to production, right? By removing this UI and putting your own app UI either on Streamlit or any of the other application that you see. If you see, it gave me the SQL that is generated, right? It also gives me the interpretation of the question, what it understood by what I had asked, right? And then it gave me the query result. Right? And all of this is runs in Streamlit. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it back. So what are we doing next? Right? Probably I'm going to burn this slide and then change with the announcements what we have. Right? But give you guys some of the ideas what we are doing. Uh, we are planning to integrate TrueLens into this. So, so all the models that you run, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be able to call the TrueLens to actually bring in all of your metrics and observability. Right? We are going to bring in the agentic interfaces. So think about now you can build Cortex agents, right? But this is going to let you build other agents interfacing with right from Snowflake. We are going to do it by bringing in an MCP interface, right? Snowflake has an MCP server that you can talk to. We are going to write an MCP server that you can talk to other MCPs right from within Snowflake using the external access, right? And we are going to bring in APIs for container services. Let's say you deploy it as an app today. It's a function. We're going to expose it as an API so you can have other applications actually call it more towards programming than towards the UI, right? And we are going to build some pre-built demos for various inter industries that we are doing for customers. We're going to load all the data set, all the demos. So when you actually click your industry, it loads the old stuff there, right? And in addition to that, we are also going to plan on, which is not here, is to build an interface to the Open Connect, right? Uh, which can then have this as a way to call Cortex functions for the data coming in from your streams or your open connect.